Let's talk about clouds and how they're divided into families. Now, clouds are divided into four families, and the way they're divided into families is according to their height range. You've got low, middle, and high altitude clouds. And you've also got clouds with a lot of vertical development. So there's four families and it's based on the height range of the clouds. Now sometimes when you see the name of a cloud, it includes the suffix nimbus along with it. And the suffix nimbus we use when naming a cloud simply means that it's a rain cloud. It could be a nimbostratus, a flat cloud with rain. It could be a cumulonimbus like these simply meaning that the cloud has got rain inside it. Now the amount of water vapor that the air can hold basically depends on the temperature of the air because the colder the air is the less vapor it's going to be able to hold in suspension. Now when water vapor goes to the liquid state, we call that process condensation and it's going to form clouds or fog or dew. If liquid water goes from the liquid state to the vapor state, that's evaporation. But sometimes the water vapor in the air completely skips the liquid state and goes directly to the frozen state to form frost, for instance. And in that case, we call it deposition when it skips the liquid state going to the frozen state and also coming back from the frozen state directly to the vapor state, not melting, but basically going directly from the frozen state to the vapor state, that is called sublimation. So how can moisture be added to unsaturated air? Well, it can be added either by evaporation coming from the liquid state to the vapor state, or it can be added by sublimation, which is coming from the frozen state and skipping the liquid state as it goes to vapor. Now, dew point is the temperature down to which the air has to be cooled in order to become saturated. When water vapor condenses, Clouds, fog, or dew will always form. When water vapor goes from the vapor state to the liquid state, when it condenses, by definition, you'll get clouds, fog, or dew. Not necessarily will you get cloud, fog, or dew when the relative humidity equals 100% because it's possible, depending on the temperature, for the water vapor to skip the liquid state and go directly to the frozen state instead. Now, if the spread between the temperature and the dew point, dew point, remember, is the saturation temperature of the air, if that spread is small and getting smaller, decreasing, and if the temperature is in the 60s Fahrenheit, what kind of weather is likely to form. Well, fog or low clouds are very likely to develop. If the temperature's in the 60s, it's too warm for freezing precipitation. And a small temperature dew point spread does not produce thunderstorms. Thunderstorms are created instead by unstable lapse rates, which we're going to talk about. Now you can calculate the altitude that the base of cumulus clouds is going to form at. And the way you do it is by knowing the temperature and the dew point and the spread between them. Because the temperature and dew point get closer together with altitude. And the rate at which they get closer together is 4.4 degrees Fahrenheit per thousand feet. So here's an example. Let's assume the FAA says that the surface air temperature is 82 degrees Fahrenheit and the dew point is 38 degrees. And they want to know at what altitude the base of the cumulus clouds would form. Well, what you do is you subtract the dew point from the temperature. Dew point is 38, 
temperature is 82, the difference is 44 degrees Fahrenheit. And remember, the temperature and dew point get closer together with altitude at a rate of 4.4 degrees Fahrenheit for every thousand feet you go up. Divide 44 degrees by 4.4, and in this case, it's 10. Nice and easy, it's 10. 10 times 1,000 feet means that the base of the clouds will be 10,000 feet above the ground.